We're starting unit two in our math book. So this is unit two, lesson one, lesson two dash one. And the first thing we're going to look at is looking at our six multiplications facts. So our sixes, we've already learned zeros, ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, nines, and tens. So what does that mean? That means we all we have left to learn are six, sevens, and eights. Um, and for a lot of kids, six, sevens, and eights are the trickiest ones. And there's a reason that we left this for the end. So first, I'm going to just show you a few things to notice. Um, one of the things to notice is that when you're multiplying by six, your product will always be an even number. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60. So if you ever are multiplying by six and you think the answer is an odd number, you know you've made a mistake somewhere because anytime you're multiplying anything by six, the product is going to be an even number. Okay, but the second thing I want to show you is that because of the commutative property of multiplication. So for example, here we have one times six. One times six is the same as six times one. And six times two and two times six are the same. And three times six and six times three are the same. So <clears throat> in fact, we already know most of our six facts because we know our ones. One times six equals six. We know our twos. Two times six equals 12. We know our threes. Three times six equals 18. We know our fours. Four times six equals 24. We know our fives, five times six equals 30. We know our nines, nine times six equals 54. Remember, you can do that neat trick with your fingers. And we know our tens, 10 times six equals 60. So look at that, that leaves us three facts to memorize. Six times six equals 36, seven times six equals 42, and eight times six equals 48. So that's not a lot, right? You can do that, you can memorize three facts. now. If you haven't been working on your math facts up until now and you don't really have your ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, nines, and tens memorized, then yes, you do have more work to do. But if you've been keeping up and you're pretty solid with all those other ones, then you really don't have much to do in order to memorize your sixes. And so right now we're just going to review some different strategies that we've learned and we're going to take a look at four different strategies that we can use um, to find our six multiplications. Um, if we don't know them yet, we are going to need to strategize. Like, how do I figure this out? So strategy number one, start with five times six. We know that five times six is 30 and count by six from there. So one, two, three, four, five groups of six gives us 30. So if we want to find six times six, we just add one more group of six. 30 plus six equals 36. Easy peasy. Strategy number two, double a threes multiplication. So uh, if we know that six times three equals 18, then we just have to double that, right? 18 plus 18 equals 36. Six times six equals 36. So that's another strategy you could use. Here's another strategy, and we've done this before. You can com combine two multiplications you know. And here's two ways that we've looked at that with pictures, either with um, a rectangle where we split the rectangle into one rectangle on the top and another on the bottom, and also the equal shares drawing. So we can look at right here, we're taking 4 times 6. 4 times 6 equals 24. And here, down here, this rectangle is 2 times 6. 2 times 6 equals 12. 24 plus 12 equals 36. And we're basically doing the same thing over here. 1, 2, 3, 4 groups of 6 gives us 24. 1, 2, 2 groups of 6 gives us 12. 24 plus 12 equals 36. 6 times 6 equals 36. So that's another strategy you can use. And the fourth strategy we're going to look at is you can either add six on to the sixes multiplication before or subtract six from the multiplication ahead. Now this sounds very confusing, but pay attention. It's not really. So we're looking for six times six. Let's do one, two, three, four, five groups of six equals six. We need one more group of six. Add six on 36. That's very, that's pretty much what we did in that first strategy. But another way we could look at it is let's say we actually want to do four times six. Then 
we're going to take one, two, three, four, five groups of six because we know that's 30. Five times six is 30. And then four is one less than five, right? We want one fewer group this time. So we're just going to take a group of six away. So we're going to subtract six for those six items that we took away. 30 minus six equals 24. So those are four strategies that you can use. And for the, ne the next two problems, they just ask you to choose one of the strategies above and show how you could use it to find seven times six. So let's take a look at strategy number three, combine two multiplications you know. So we've got our product that we're trying to find and we've got five groups of six is 30. And to make seven groups of six, we need two more. Two groups of six is 12. We're just going to add that together. 30 plus 12 equals 42. Seven times six equals 42. And choose one of the other strategies to show how you could use it to find eight times six. So we'll do strategy one. Start with five times six and then count by six from there. So we know that one, two, three, four, five groups of six is 30. We're going to need three more groups of six to make eight groups of six. So 30 plus six is 36. Six more than that is 42. And six more than that is 48. So that, those are some different strategies that you can use. But uh, the best strategy for you is to actually memorize your math facts so that you can just Every time you see eight times six, you know it's 48. Every time you see six times six, you know it's 36. And when you see seven times six, bam, 42. That's the best strategy. But until then, these are some handy strategies and you should always be drawing pictures to figure out things that you're not sure about.